Hi guys, I hope all of you are staying safe and healthy. We're all still alive, but the workshop here is running on minimal staff, meaning just me. Because here in Michigan, as we talked about in our last vlog, we're into now our second week of mandatory lockdown, which means everyone's still hiding in their homes. But I still have to work, harder than ever in fact, because I have still commitments to our audience, you guys, and to sponsors. Which is one of the things we'll talk about here on shop blog number 24. The rest is right here. And in between, you can watch Mustache Mike putter around in his coronavirus-free garage and maybe try to guess what he's making. Over the last week, I've released the first three parts of what will be a five-part series about sharpening by hand. So far, we've discussed ways to speed up the process so you're less likely to put it off. We've talked about jigs, including a sharpening board that you can make yourself. And we've talked a lot about stropping, which I think is the key to keeping your tools sharper longer so you spend less time at your stones. In the next few days, we're going to talk about freehand sharpening without a jig, and then about using a bench grinder occasionally to speed up that process even more. I've seen several videos about grinding new bevels with a bench grinder on your chisels and plane irons, but they all seem to skip a lot of fundamental things that you really need to know. People watch these videos and it looks so easy. You just hold the tool and you move it across the stone. But when you try it yourself, you sometimes find it doesn't work like it did in the video, because the video never told you about wheel grits or glazing or how the thickness of the tool affects the angle of the tool rest. Grinding can mess up a nice set of chisels in a hurry if you don't know what you're doing. So I think this grinder tutorial will be pretty comprehensive and a good way to end this five part series. Speaking of sharpening, we have a lot of sharpening videos that delve deeper into various parts of the subject, such as our stropping tutorial or our tutorials about diamond wheels or the one we did about CBN wheels. I think we have two of those. There's all kinds of them. We need a place for people to find these videos easily all in one place. And that's what we're trying to do with the new website, which we're still working on. At the top of the homepage will be a tab that says free tutorials and under that, a menu where all of our most useful videos will be organized by subject. We're just beginning to add videos, so these pages aren't full yet. But you can see, for example, the sharpening section, where you eventually will find all of our sharpening tutorials. There will also be a section on wood finishing, one on safety, and so on. We've spent a lot of time over several years creating really comprehensive tutorials that I think are of the same or even better quality than what other sites are charging people for and calling them classes. So on the new website, I want a learning section where you can choose your subject and find all that good content that we've created for free. And these sections will continue to grow as we're always releasing new free tutorials. I'm really excited about this new website. Look for it to launch this summer, if we're all still here. A lot of you have been asking about the next Cool Tools video. If you recall, last December we released two special editions. One with what I think are the best tools from our first 18 episodes of Cool Tools. And another with the best cheap tools, under 20 bucks, from all of those first 18 episodes. I'll link to those two special editions below if you miss them. 
But at that time, I promised another special edition I was calling Drool Tools, which would feature some of the fanciest, most expensive woodworking tools out there. And that is still going to happen. This is a tough one to put together because it's going to feature 10 tools instead of 5. And many of these are really complex tools. So that means we have to spend a lot of time testing them all out and filming them and explaining them. It's just going to take a while, especially since I'm short-handed now. I'll get to it as soon as I can, but in the meantime, I think I may do a regular Cool Tools video first, because it's been a while since we've had one and some people are getting antsy. It always surprises me how popular this Cool Tools series is. I mean, I know I love tools, and I think woodworkers in general love tools. But I always get crap when I show a new tool in a regular video, especially if it's expensive. Yet the Cool Tool series is nothing but tool reviews, and some can be pretty pricey, even though we try to have a range of tools, including one under $20 in each episode. If a Cool Tools video, though, doesn't get at least 100,000 views, I consider it disappointing. These are pretty popular videos. So I guess tool reviews aren't as objectionable to folks as the small vocal minority of complainers try to make it out to be in our regular videos. Speaking of tools and the small vocal group of complainers, let's talk about something that always gets folks worked up. Sponsors. From time to time, I get comments accusing me of being nothing but a shill for big tool. So I think it may be helpful to spend a couple minutes explaining why we have sponsors, how we choose them, and how that affects the content we produce. First of all, we all gotta make a living. You don't go to work for free, neither do I. We have bills to pay, and I obviously don't skip many meals. So the way I see it, I have three choices. I can quit making videos and get a job at Walmart, which I think we can agree would be tragic. I can charge you a fee for every video, which I think we agree would even be more tragic. Or I can let sponsors pay the bills and you get to watch for free while I get to keep eating. It seems like a no-brainer to me. So it's hard sometimes for me to understand when people get so upset about that arrangement. They love to watch free videos. They would never dream of paying for them. But asking them to endure just a 15 second commercial at the end of a 10 minute video, which they could skip anyway, it's at the end, well, sometimes that's just too much for people. Others get upset when they see me use or recommend a tool that they personally don't like, or worse yet, is out of their price range. Take the recent video we made about a sharpening jig. Well, it was about sharpening jigs in general. One of the jigs in that video was from a sponsor. It was a fantastic jig. I'm not pushing junk. And the video was about sharpening with jigs, so it was relevant to the subject of the video. I wasn't hawking mattresses in a woodworking video. It was also just a tiny part of the video. In fact, I spent a longer period of time on a competitor's jig for those who couldn't afford or didn't want the sponsored product. But some folks saw that jig and they just shut their brains off. I had one person say, I used to make useful tutorials, but now I'm just in it for the money. Think about that. It was an eight minute tutorial. It showed you how to build a sharpening board, how to use stops on the board to quickly set up any jig, how to modify a cheap jig so that it would work well for you, and how to use these jigs to sharpen and strop. It was loaded with information. I only spent 30 seconds of the video talking about the sponsored jig, which again was relevant to the subject of the video. So that guy missed seven and a half minutes of the kind of instruction he claimed I used to make because he was so fixated on just those 30 seconds. I understand that some folks just don't like to be distracted by commercials. That's why I don't accept sponsors that are irrelevant to you. I choose the brands I work with very carefully. First of all, they must have products that will truly benefit my audience. Those products have to be of good quality and they have to offer excellent service. I don't do sponsorships like other YouTubers do. 
Most of them go through an agency. Whatever the agency brings them is what they sell with little regard to the product itself or the company behind it. I am not singling out any particular YouTube channel or even woodworking YouTubers. I'm talking about YouTube in general. That's how it usually works with agencies. That's why you see a lot of ads for cell phone apps and such nonsense that's not relevant to the video. These companies dump a lot of money into these ad agencies and then the agencies contact these YouTube channels that really don't care who they work with or how relevant it is to their audience. They're just hoping you'll tolerate it long enough that they can get paid. I don't accept those deals. Seriously, I turn down an agency at least once a week. They're all over the place. I've only done one deal so far with an agency and that was years ago for Wrangler Rigs. It was a one-time deal, but to this day, I still, all the pants and the shorts and most of the shirts that I buy from work for work are still Wrangler Rigs. I did that ad because I believed in the product. I'd rather leave money on the table, which I often do, than push crappy products on folks who come to learn about woodworking, not about video games they can play on their phones. Instead, I choose who I want to work with based on whether I use their products and like them. Then I approach them instead of waiting for them to find an agency and approach me. And we build long-term relationships, not one-time deals. Because the brands I choose to work with are worth sticking with. I don't jump from one sponsor to another for more money. In fact, I often take significantly less money to work with small brands. Because to me, it's about finding good tools that genuinely benefit you, my audience. And I think it's a shame that so many great small businesses go unnoticed just because their budgets won't allow them to get exposure. Now, sometimes these smaller brands just can't sell their tools for cheap prices because they make in small quantities or they refer, refuse to compromise quality to get those prices down. So I understand that not everyone in our audience can afford these expensive tools. But we work with more than 20 brands. Some are expensive, like Joburgs and Tormac or Bridge City Tools. Others are relatively inexpensive, like Trend or Eye Gaging or DuraGrip. Sponsorship isn't just about making a living, it's about helping our audience find products that will make their shop time better. So we have to work with a variety of sponsors and a variety of price ranges to fit the variety of people in our audience. We choose our brand partners based upon that, not upon how much money we can make. And not all the products we recommend are sponsored. In fact, a lot of the tools I recommend in videos are not sponsored at all. If a product is sponsored, there is always a disclosure. Sometimes it's the standard YouTube mo notification, but more often than not, we put a whole 15 second ad, usually at the end of the video, so it's very clear who is sponsoring that video. We also post it beneath the video in the description and often pinned to the top of the comments where it's easy to see. If you don't see any of that and you see a tool in the video, that tool is not sponsored. What about bias? I readily admit that when I see a YouTuber talk about a sponsored product, I take it with a grain of salt. I don't think he's a liar or that he is some bought and paid for shill of the tool companies as some people in the comments are so quick to assume. But I know we all have our built-in bias and believe it or not, money has little to do with it. Let me give you an example. Are you a DeWalt or a Makita man? Ford or General Motors? Coke or Pepsi? My neighbor can spend an hour telling me how Bud Light is superior to Miller Light. They both taste like piss to me, but he has a Bud Light bias and he's never gotten a nickel from them. Don't assume that anyone who says one tool is superior to another is giving you a completely unbiased opinion, sponsored or not. Instead, look at the facts presented, the results you can see with your own eyes. He can tell you something works, but what really counts is when he shows you the proof. All the products I recommend are products we use here in the shop. We know they work, and rather than expecting you to just take our word for it, we make videos showing them working. I understand some will always question if I'm being influenced by sponsorship dollars. It's not an unfair question. All I can say is, I'm not gonna lie to you just to make a few bucks. Sponsorship is actually only a smaller portion of our income. 
I already make a good living. I have no problem finding sponsors for this channel. I'm not bragging. I'm just trying to tell you that I don't need to compromise my principles for sponsored dollars. That's not who I am, and I know you're smart. So if I'm doing that, you're going to take off. That would be a betrayal of you. Let me make clear though that not every ad you see on YouTube is endorsed by the channel you see it on. You have to understand the differences. I usually put my sponsor ads at the end of the video or definitely with an on-screen notification that tells you this is the video's sponsor. But YouTube also runs ads at the beginning of videos called pre-roll ads. I do make a few cents from that ad, but I'm not endorsing that brand. I don't even get to see what's going to be in that ad. I certainly don't get to choose the brands or the products that are in them. In fact, they're based on your personal internet browsing history. So if you get an ad for Ted's Woodworking Scam, don't blame me. It's because you were searching for certain keywords online that Google decided would make you receptive to an ad for that company. The pre-roll ad you see is not the pre-roll ad the next viewer will see or that I would see. YouTube is reserving that space at the beginning of the video for themselves, and then they pay the video creator a tiny fraction of the revenue for that right. It's just like television. Networks run the ads, not TV shows. And in this case, I'm the TV show, and the network is YouTube. That's really, though, getting into the weeds of how this business works. But I just want to be clear, because some people really get on me if they don't like one of the pre-roll ads they see. Those commercials at the beginning of the video are not from us. Those are not our sponsors. I don't endorse them. Now let's see what the stash came up with. It's a gumball machine. It's kind of a fun project. It was from an old scroll saw magazine. It actually appeared in a video some time back. I don't have plans for it, but if you can find a 2015 Gizmos and Gadgets special issue of Scroll Saw Woodworking and Crafts magazine, if you can find one, there are full-size patterns in there. Don't forget to check out those tutorials on sharpening that we're making. Those are really comprehensive and really good. Even if you think you know everything about sharpening, you're going to pick up some tips in there. Then you can sit back and have a cold one, because you've earned it, my friend. For the last several years, I've been replacing my cheap drill and forstner bits with quality bits from Fish Tools. They're a family-run company that still forges their bits the old-fashioned way. Try replacing your most used bits with Fish Bits using the links in the notes below this video, and you'll see why I love them so much. Wait, don't go yet. If you're new here, please subscribe, and remember to ring the bell. I would really appreciate that. Give us a thumbs up, or better yet, leave us a comment. I always read them. And be sure to check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nub's Woodworking Journal. It's always packed with tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker.